online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound, the Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome along to the latest edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show. In the next hour, uh, Bob and myself, Colin, uh, talking you through... uh, (laughs) I don't say my name enough, I don't think. People might not know. They might not know who I am. It's not essential, I don't think, but, you know, there might be... I've spent too much time on this now already. Uh, we're, we're <laughs> Are you just trying to make me laugh now, like during the introduction every week? It, it works so well, doesn't it? It's like tickling you, but I can't do that either due to social distance. Anyway, no, that no, that would be very inappropriate <laughs> at the moment. Absolutely, but long distance right, tickling well, it might be a thing. Any, any time. <laughs> Good point. Yes, shouldn't do that at all. Uh, we'll be looking back on the Luton game. Five games of the Championship season remaining. It doesn't seem very many, does it? Oh, no, it doesn't. It really doesn't. And when you then look at the table and you think that Rotherham are playing Coventry, they're about to kick off, uh, and we will keep our eye on that for you during the next hour. Um, yeah, it, it, it's not looking particularly hopeful now. I think you know, you... we, 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 we've been very positive throughout the whole season, so yes. I think you know with five games to go, when you're now nine points adrift, you are allowed to start being not quite so positive. I don't know about you, but I looked at the league table on Saturday and I thought, well, mathematically it's still possible, but then I suppose when you look at the games, as you say, Rotherham have in hand still, and it's relying on other teams slipping up as well a bit too much. And I think also when you look at the fixture list, and we've got to play Bournemouth... Uh, we've got to play Middlesbrough, obviously. We struggled against them at Adams Park. Uh, Swansea, obviously, on Saturday. You know, the, these are not easy games. Uh, we, you know, we've we've had a nice little spell against teams that sort of have had nothing to play for. We, we could have done with a few more of those, really. No, definitely. Yes, it's it's a tough run in, isn't it? As they say. It is. It's a tough road to hope. <laughs> Someone else once said. Uh, well, also, uh, coming up this hour, we'll be hearing from uh, former striker Jermaine Easter. Been catching up with him uh, as we prepare to play Swansea, of course, uh, a team he uh, made six appearances for, but also 12 for his country as well, and of course scored in every round of the League Cup in that season, which culminated in a semi final against Chelsea over two legs. Apologies about that. We should have played him on Maundy Thursday. We, <laughs> we only just figured that out afterwards, didn't we? No, I think it works quite well ahead of the Swansea game as well. I think it does, yes. yes. There, there is still a link there. There is still a reason that we're interviewing him. Yes, we'll try and find other seasonal players to play for you as well. Um, <laughs> is there anyone with the surname of Christmas, do we know? I was just that. Like a... was exactly what I was thinking. Is there anyone with the surname of Christmas in football? I don't think there is. And we'll be hearing from Dave Ward as well, who's the manager of Wickham Wanderers Ladies, although they're now being known as... They're Wh- being rebranded. <laughs> Wickham Wanderers Women, which might be trickier to say, but we'll certainly work on it. Uh, that's to come as well. But first, obviously, uh, look back at Luton. That's quite catchy, isn't it? A look back at Loon. Oh, we've got some correspondence as well. Oh, yes, I know. You we'll, keep teasing the correspondence. Yes, yes, I we'll, haven't actually seen it, because no. I, I haven't been in the station to, to sort of like to see the correspondence. I'll share that with you at some point in the programme. I'll put it there oh, for safekeeping. You're teasing it even more. Yeah, now. yeah. I'll wave it in front of you. Not really in front of you, but in front of me, certainly. Um, it would be in front of you if you were sat where you used to sit before the social distancing thing. Yes, that's true. But now I've had the jab, then, then maybe we'll be able to be reunited. <laughs> maybe for the last show of the season. Oh, that would be exciting, wouldn't it? In a sort of Hollywood film type, type-esque type scene. Just in another sort of it's notice board a, aside as well. About that. <laughs> We've got something quite special planned for the last show of the season. Stay tuned hope. for that. Yes, yes. fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Asterisk, hopefully. Um, actually, while we're on the subject, we've got some good stuff coming up. Uh, next week, we're chatting to former boss Gary Waddock. I'm very excited about that. That's that's going to be marvellous. He who, of course, signed the current manager. Indeed. And then also, uh, in a couple of weeks, I think, or is it three weeks? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit unsure of my weeks. But before the final game of the season, not the final show of the season, the final game against Middlesbrough, we'll be speaking to Alan Phillips, who captained the side in 1975 against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. Yeah, that's, that's again, a very good uh, uh, a bit of interviewing. Well done, Colin. Some excellent guests. I must, uh, I was going to say pay tribute, but uh, thank especially uh, JDT and Alan Hutchison as well from the X Players Association for assisting with, with the aforementioned. Indeed, we are very, very grateful to them. But let's kick off, as I say, with, uh, with Luton. Um, very encouraging to score first again. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, definitely in in the beginning, you were sort of thinking, oh, goodness me, you know, because Luton did look quite good and we did look like we were we were struggling to cope uh, for, for a little while. And so the fact that we then got the first goal uh, was just absolutely marvellous. Um, and, you know, and, and actually, if if the game had only lasted maybe sort of 80 minutes, uh, it, it, it would have been great. And we'd be really, you know, speaking really positively. I was going to say, it was such a shame to be conceding so close to the end, but I guess when you've only got ten men as well, it's, it's a bit of an uphill struggle. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and that's exactly what happened. You know, we, we coped pretty well, really, for about 25 minutes. Um, but in the end, just, I, I know it was really a barrage that, that we faced, uh, ever since, uh, Josh Knight getting sent off. Um, and yeah, we did really, really well to survive as long as we did. Um, and once Luton got one, you could, you could really see what was coming. Uh, and sure enough, you know, the fact that the fact that they got three was, was slightly cruel. Uh, I don't, I don't think it was quite a three one game. Two one probably would have been fair enough. Well, let's hear the thoughts of the manager. Gareth was speaking to Sky's Bianca Westwood after the game. Uh, do forgive the background noise uh, as well. And then uh, some, some interesting points that Gareth makes that we'll, we'll pick up on afterwards. Gareth, it was all going so well until that one moment that yeah. changed the game, the red card decision. Can you give us your thoughts on that? Yeah, please? red cards changed the game. You know, Luton had no ideas up to that moment and against 10. It's wicked wonders, you know, we're, we're, we're fighting for our lives. With 11, I mean, we play so well, we played really well. Gutted, you know, we're, we're, I'm, sh- I'm sure we'll get the appeal on that one because Mowat's red card against us at Barnsley, you know, it was over 10, that was never a red card either, but we seem to have had a lot of decisions go against us and cost us at major times. That's cost us today a major moment, you know, uh, like I say, Luton did seem a threat until we went to 10 men. And when we did, they took advantage of it. Still two set plays and, and that's disappointing, but um, it's difficult with 10 men. It's difficult in leagues one and two with 10 men, never mind a championship, so, uh, but proud of the boys, as always, efforts with their... Uh, They've worked their socks off in a game. We've got to go and win five from five now, and uh, we're well capable of that as well. Talk us through the, the challenge then. You know, you were yeah. going to say it wasn't a red card. No, if you look, uh, Josh Knight has slipped a tiny bit. And now, if the referee looks at that and takes that into consideration, I think he probably gives a yellow and says, look, you've slipped and you're unlucky to catch him. He made the decision so quickly. His red card was out almost before Josh could get off the floor. And, and for me, I don't think he's had a think about it. I think he's just seen it and gone, right, that's a red. We'll see. We'll see what the panel thinks. But uh, it can't change the game, but it did change the game. It can't change the result now. The results happened. And I'm sure Lerner will probably say something different about the uh, the game. But for me, the red card has been a massive, massive game changer. You had one penalty decision that went your way. Should you have had another one just before that? Again, referee. We're bringing them into the equation, aren't we? Uh, I think so. Um, we've had them before, but um, again, you know, we're not getting the rub of the green. Well, we've been on a good run, and I still consider this to be a good run because the performance for me was good. The effort, the work rate, right? just phenomenal from the Wickham boys. Uh, and this dream is still alive, believe me. Yeah, because even when you went down to 10, it still took them a while to get on the score sheet, didn't it? And they worked their socks, as you said, and put everything yeah. on the line. I'm just disappointed at set pieces because, you know, 10 men, you, you probably think you're going to defend them better. They didn't tear us apart with 10 men. It was uh, it was two set pieces that have cost us ultimately, you know, the third goal. We're chasing the game, but um, I go right back to that red card. Josh Nice got it in there, but uh, for me, he shouldn't have been sent off. We should have sold the game out like we were doing. Um, happens in football, bigger things in the world. I'm not going to uh, lose too much sleep over it. I've got to get ready for next week now and prepare for the next game. I guess if there's a silver lining, none of the bottom six teams won today. So is it, as you as you were with a game less you know so um, win five out of five the boys have said they can do that I've said they can do that let's go again do a great bunch can't wait to get stuck into uh, into Swansea next weekend and, uh, and see what we can do see they're positive hey they were weren't they <laughs> <laughs> the players think they can do it, win five out of five. I mean, you think, don't you, of the, f- the famous West Brom great escape, and they, they what was it six, I think they won on the trot, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. I, well, I think different. the trouble is, it's it's just the, the results, you know, no, if we win five out of five, then yes, we're giving ourselves a chance, but particularly in this strange season with the Rotherham situation and with other teams, it's not as if we're all on the same number of points, uh, sorry, of same number of games, and I just think that, you know, that's going to go against us. And Gareth has said in, in previous interviews, uh, you know, obviously the the rhetoric has been very, very positive for most of the season, but recently he has started saying, you know, we're, we're just going to do as well as we can. It might not be enough. And I think that it comes down to that, that yes, if, even if we do win five out of five now, you can still see results go, not going our way that would mean that actually we, we are going to get relegated, which would be a great shame. But at the same time, you know, it would be fantastic to win five out of five, even if we did go down, because it, it would be a real boost ahead of, of uh, a, a promotion challenge hopefully next season and obviously you can't do much about the what ifs but um, no. Bianca they're asking about you know could it have been an, a penalty to Wickham and Gareth seems to think so you know the, the, obviously Definitely. the sending off was debatable yeah I mean uh, both of those things definitely we easily could have had a uh, 
penalty um, before the penalty. Um, so Uchi being brought down uh, in the penalty area um, definitely looked like a penalty to me. Uh, then Admiral being brought down uh, about five, ten minutes later, uh, and we did get that penalty. I think the trouble with the red card was uh, that Anis Mometi had um, got booked uh, probably less than 60 seconds before Josh Knight made his tackle. Uh, and to 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 the the referee's eye i'm sure josh knights looked worse than anis mametti's did and therefore it was a red card possibly if we'd had var i i don't want us to have var in the championship league one i don't want us to have var full stop but if we did maybe it might have been looked at and they might have actually realized that yes you know josh did maybe slip slightly did possibly get his studs caught slightly in the turf and whilst it looked like a horrible challenge actually if you were just watching it if you put it into slow motion you might then have decided that really a yellow was probably fairer there do seem so many games this season as well and i'm sure having watched them as well where you know you just think if only such certain decisions would have gone for us Yes, definitely. Um, so many, uh, going all the way back to that Norwich game at Carrow Road where you think the Norwich player really should have been sent off in the first half. Maybe that would have changed things. The trouble is, you you can never know, can you? And also, probably there's been certain situations, admittedly not many of them, it seems, for Wickham, where maybe we have got the rub of the green and where we have been slightly lucky. So does it all even itself out at the end of the league campaign i'm not sure and i think when you're a smaller club in a bigger division you definitely don't seem to get as many decisions as the bigger teams in the division such as the norwiches the watfords the bournemouths um but at the same time yeah you know you you can't just play the what if um thing because eventually you'll you'll just end up going mad i think (laughs) and you definitely feel don't you i mean it sounds really cliche obviously but there are five cup finals to come Yes, uh, that's very true. And, you know, and they really are cup finals, aren't they? Because we're not really expected to, to go and get anything from Swansea. Clearly, they are still very much looking to get automatically promoted. Um, and then after that, you think, well, Bristol City, you know, clearly have, have had a very, um, well, the, the fairly normal season, I suppose you could say for them, because they always seem to be challenging for promotion at the beginning. And then it seems to fall away quite badly after that. Um, then we've got another trip, obviously, down to Wales, uh, to face, uh, Mick McCarthy is Cardiff who again seem to now be a little bit up and down Um, and then of course it's Bournemouth at home and that really isn't going to be easy uh, followed by Middlesbrough away on the last day uh, which is going to be obviously a bit of a trek up to to meet Neil Warnock's side uh, who did cope with us rather well if you remember just after Christmas uh, when you know we were all positive having beaten Cardiff uh, and then Middlesbrough came to Adams Park and and, uh, we took the lead as well in that game uh, but ended up losing it. I was going to say, as Gareth said to me last week, but just remember, you didn't hear any of my questions to Gareth, but um, we only heard the first part of the press session. But he did say that I think it's really nice as well to kind of step back and appreciate that the teams we have left, you know, the likes of Swansea, Cardiff, Middlesbrough, uh, Bournemouth, these are the types of teams that you would sort of get in cup games or cup finals even. Yeah. Yeah, completely. And in, in some ways, you can say, well, actually, these are the games that we, we've played well in this season. It, it's been the, the matches against teams that you think, oh, you know, we're probably going to struggle against them this afternoon, where we've come away uh, again so often saying, you know, oh, wow, well, we can played really, really well. It was so unfortunate that we conceded that last minute goal or whatever it happened to be. Uh, but definitely, I think that is the tale of our season, that we have performed well when we haven't been expected to. And it's the, those games against the teams that are down with us uh, where you think, well, yeah, if we really had wanted to stay up, you know, we needed to to do well against the Coventries. We needed to do well against, you know, Derby County, those, those sort of sides. Um, and yes, you know, we, we've won some of those. Obviously, we beat Rotherham away. We beat Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, we beat Birmingham City away. But there haven't been enough of those results against the teams that are down with us um, at the, the bottom end of the championship, really. That's, you know, that that's where we've come unstuck. I'm really interested that Gareth highlighted in that post-match interview saying that despite the defeat against Luton, he really feels that, you know, we're still on a good run. Yeah, and I think that that is true. You know, we we probably on our, our one of our best spells of the season. Um, the fact that obviously you know we'd won the two games previous to that um, and drawn the one before that. Uh, you know, it, it definitely it's it's looking sort of positive. And as I say. It would be fantastic if we could now continue that run. I can't quite see us winning five out of five, but if we could, you know, maybe win three out of five and get a couple of draws, I think that would be, you know, a, a brilliant 
start, if you like, um, then to you know to the following season. It will certainly give the team a lot of hopefully uh, confidence uh, during the the close season uh, that then they can take into you know a, a promotion challenge from League One. And I don't know about you as well, but I've got this real feeling uh, that in at least one of the remaining games, possibly more, there'll be some fantastic stories. Like there'll be a fantastic goal, or there'll be a fantastic something. You know, a bit like in the Oxford playoff, or in a bit like. Uh, you know the the playoff semi finals even against Fleetwood. You know when you just think, wow, this is this game. Will, yeah. This is really that, a standout, memorable occasion. That would be really, really good, wouldn't it? Um, you know, we obviously had it against Rotherham where we didn't really see that coming. The fact that we'd go and win three 0 away. You know, it would be absolutely brilliant, wouldn't it? If say we could beat Bournemouth at Adams Park, that that would just be great. A side who were obviously in the champ, uh, sorry, in the Premier League last season. Um, it's one of those things that we've talked about time and again on this program. The fact that when we play Bournemouth uh, down at Dean Court, uh, as I will always think of it, not the Vitality Stadium, um, they had what was it ninety nine million pounds worth of talent on display. Uh, against Wickham Wanderers who've only ever really paid money for what now two players uh, in their history so say we could beat Bournemouth at Adams Park that would be truly fantastic and I know they're very different games as well but to lose 5-0 to Blackburn and then to to beat them as well totally yeah I mean and again that is one of the things that I think we will always look back on this season and think well goodness me you know 5-0 at Ebor Park and they looked brilliant that day Blackburn Uh, and you really did come away from that thinking number one oh goodness me you know we're going to struggle and we're going to have lots of afternoons like this well we haven't we, we've had two afternoons that were like that we've had the the Blackburn game uh, and the Brentford game obviously where we lost 7-2 but other than that we've always been competitive um, and similarly you, you definitely thought goodness me you know Blackburn looked like they're going to be promotion contenders you certainly didn't think that actually later on in the season Blackburn would come down to Adams Park and we would beat them uh, and you know and completely deserved to beat them as well. I think there's much to look forward to in the final five. I don't know if anyone's yes, calling indeed. it that, but it's the a bit like the Super five. Six, isn't it? It's a bit like... <laughs> we go down to the final five. And then the final four. Yes, that still works. And then the... Come on. I haven't thought this bit through well enough. Uh, the no. Terrific Three. <laughs> Fantastic Three. Where does it reach me? Fan- Fantastic Three. Fantastic um, Three. Does that work better? Yeah, well, just about, yeah, okay. <laughs> Terrific Two. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful one up on tiny, on up on tea side. <laughs> yes, much see much to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Still to come on this evening's Wickham Wonder Show, we'll be reading out some correspondence. We've had an actual Ooh. letter. That <laughs> I don't think any show has said that for about ten years. <laughs> no, you know, it's We've exciting. Had an letter. We've had emails as well, but I can't make well, a noise yes, for that. We have had e- I'm not saying we haven't had emails. I'm no, just no. That someone has, has actually taken the time to sit there and write us a letter. Yeah, How lovely. Fun. Thank we'll be reading that. We'll be hearing from uh, Wickham Wanderers ladies slash women uh, manager uh, Dave Ward and uh, Jermaine Easter. We'll hear from him next. This is Wickham Sound. Second part of the Wickham Wanderers show. Uh, Coventry uh, should be about four and then up, really. I don't know if you're following the game. If you're listening on the <laughs> yes, podcast, you already know what's happened. But <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, yes, they're, they're, they're Rotherham still uh, don't look particularly good, do they? No, that they're on what you might call a poor run. They really are, and you would think that it would be completely different because, you know, they've got all of these games. And, yeah, I know that they must be coming thick and fast and the fact that they've already played once this week, but you would use that so much to your advantage and say, look, you know, we could be so clear of the relegation zone and it's just not happening for them, is it? Or is it just another example of another team who've come up, you know, the previous season and have struggled? Yeah, possibly. That That is true. Uh, I mean, obviously both teams came up uh, and Coventry definitely look at the moment the more likely to survive. Ooh. Ooh. Does that, is that a prediction or is that just... Um, well, I, yeah, I, th- I think, yeah, I think, you know... It, it, I, no, I, it certainly I, looks that way, doesn't it? You, you look at the table at the minute, you know, I, I would be worried if I was a Derby fan. No, definitely. Uh, you know, slightly. On many levels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> um, although I did notice something today that, that, that said that actually they're, they're aiming for the Champions League, which I was slightly surprised to discover because I didn't think oh. you could get to the Champions League <laughs> in the Championship. <laughs> um... But, uh, you know... Are you sure you that know, wasn't, like, predictive text gone wrong? Someone started yeah, to win championship yeah, and then... I did wonder that, yes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think, you know, they're, 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 just like you said, there possibly will still be a few surprises in the championship in these remaining games that we have. Um, and, yeah, I definitely think... I mean, Wayne Rooney today has told the fans not to panic. And I think when, when your yes. manager feels they have to come out and say things like, don't panic, um, yeah, that's, you know, that's dad's army time, really. As mentioned a little earlier, we've got Swansea uh, on the way next uh, someone who's played for both clubs uh, made six appearances for Swansea he was on loan uh, but uh, Jermaine Easter had a fantastic period uh, at the Blues uh, over 60 games played and uh, a fantastic start uh, to his time at the club earliest memories would be sort of I suppose before I actually arrived um, John Gorman put a lot of effort into to trying to take me there from Stockport 
and I had a I had a choice between sort of going to Bristol City or going to to Wickham and, and at the time obviously Bristol City were in a higher division. Uh, Gary Johnson was a manager. I'd met Gary, but because of the effort and, and sort of the, the feeling I got from John, I, I obviously chose Wickham. And it was kind of a bit I can guess slow for you to get going in terms of goals when you initially arrived, I guess with Tommy Mooney being in such such good form at the time. Yeah, obviously when I came in it was sort of mid season. Uh it's always difficult joining a club sort of halfway through the season because the lads have sort of built the, the, the momentum they had. I think we were top of the league when I joined and the lads were flying high. So I sort of came in and it was sort of adjusting to, to a new way of playing and a new group of players. And, and it was a pretty slow start, to be fair, disappointingly. But I sort of changed that sort of the, the following season. But no, it, listen, uh, it, I, I love my time at the club. It was uh, it's full of very positive memories. No, definitely. Something that must really stand out is that is that your first league hat trick that you got against Bury, and that and that was the fastest of the, of the, of the clubs as well. Yeah, yeah, I remember the game clearly. I think I'd come on a sub actually. Um, I don't think I started the game. Paul Lambert was manager at the time, and I think one of the lads came off. It might have been might have been Bloomy, but I'm not sure. Uh, and I came on and, and obviously managed to score a hat trick, and we went on to win the game. Was it three 0 Yeah, yeah. So no, yeah, great. Really nice. I guess obviously being a striker, it's a, I guess perhaps other goals do stick out as well. But it must be sort of landmark goals and, and, and a hat trick like that as well, especially being your, your first league and it being so quick as well. Yeah, I know. To be fair, I, I, I can remember the, the, the goals pretty pretty clearly. In, in fairness, um, I think sort of the, the, probably my favourite one of those three was um, the second goal where I think I lobbed the keeper. I've sort of gone down the left hand channel, lifted over the keeper. It was a pretty good finish. So yeah, I enjoyed that one. And it must have felt like the start of something really special. Obviously, there was the, the League Cup run as well, and you scored in every round of that. That must have been a competition that you, you enjoyed uh, enjoyed scoring in as well. Yeah, I, I managed to score. I, 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 I can't remember, but I scored quite a lot of goals in that competition, most of them for Wickham. But um, I managed to do pretty well it, during my career through uh, playing in the, in the League Cup. Uh, but no, we, we had fantastic memories. Obviously, we um, we played some, some some decent Premier League teams that year and. And we beat them, and to be fair, we beat them pretty convincingly in some of the games. So um, no, it was, it was good, good memories. We had a good group of players there, good group of lads. Some of them I still keep in touch with even now, today. So no, it was good. And obviously to score in the first leg as well, that must have been fantastic, and, and to play at Stamford Bridge too. Yeah, yeah, I've managed to play at the bridge uh, a few times uh, since that game, but yeah, it was a great, great experience. I, I, obviously, it was, it was a full house, I, I, I think. And uh, the Wickham fans came in their numbers, and it, 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 no, it was a really good, really good evening. As I say, such a special time, and I know that year you were in the League Two Team of the Year and and got Players Player of the Year as well. It must have been such a, a great sort of time to be involved in the club and to be in such great form as well. Yeah, no, it, it was brilliant. Like I said, we had a we had a great group of lads, and, and a lot of the lads went on and, and played um, played at a lot higher level. Some of the boys went on and played in the Premier League. Uh, a lot of the boys went on and played internationally. So we had uh, the squad of players we had then was probably better than the level we were playing at at the time, which is probably why we went on on such a good run in the Cup. And it's around the time you got your Wales debut as well. That must have been really special, A, to sort of represent your country, but also uh, to be one of the few few Wiccan players, especially at the time, to, to have got international honours. Yeah, I, I, I think someone told me before the, the Chelsea away game that, uh, that Tosh was... Uh, John Tosh had, had, had been watching me and um, that he was going to be at that game that night. So I think my debut came maybe a couple of weeks after that uh, against Northern Ireland. How did you get to actually find out that you, you were going to be picked? I can't remember, to be honest with you. I'd like to say Tosh rang me, but I don't think he did. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. It might have been, it might have been through Paul Lambert at uh, the club. I think it was, to be honest. You must remember very well your feeling of wearing the jersey for the first time. Oh yeah, it was it was, it was a fantastic feeling. Not a lot of players can can, can say they they represented their country, and I, I managed to do it twelve times. So um, it was a fantastic honour. And as you say, it seemed to be such a special team at that time, and, and it must be, as you say, very rewarding that that players like Mike Williamson and Kachianya and, and others, you know, went on to do so so well, sort of a higher level as well. Well, yeah, we had. Uh, I think Mike went and played in the Premier League, and, and Kachi did, and Russell Martin did, and. Uh, it might have been one or two others. Uh, I can't think off the top of my head, but we, yeah, we we had, we had a good group of lads, good group of lads, and, and obviously the lads proved that by going on and playing at a much higher level than the, the league two, which we were playing in at the time. And Matt Bloomfield's still there now, of course. Yeah, he's still going. Yeah, no fair play to him. Great lad, Bloomers. Um, obviously, he, he's been there. I can't even remember how long he's been there now, but um, 
he's a legend of the football club and he's such a good good guy so yeah fair play to him and you say you look back on your time at the club uh, really fondly and uh, as you say it felt like such a special time didn't it those those sort of early 2000s yeah oh, yeah it was great like i said we had such a good team spirit good group of lads uh, we had a couple of jokers in the pack, uh, Oaksy and, and, and Clint East, Easton. And we, yeah, we just had a great team spirit, you know what I mean? And, and like throughout my career, I haven't gone on after that. All the teams I sort of did well in managed to have that similar team spirit. And we had that in abundance that year. It was really nice, obviously, for, for Wickham fans as well, to see you go on and do well as well, obviously playing for, for Palace at a higher level. And as you say, for, for Wales more and the, and the other clubs that you're at as well, where you, you had a, a number of appearances also. Yeah, yeah, they've obviously, I think Wickham have done well over the years in terms of the players they've produced and I think uh, they've produced quite a few that have gone on and maybe it's not produced but a few players have come through the Wickham ranks and and then sort of gone on and played Premier League level and and, and sort of international level and so no, it's it's been, I'm sure it's been great for them. And you must have been so pleased to see them get to the Championship as well. Oh yeah, fantastic. Um, Obviously, it's been a, it's been a tough tough year for them this year. Um, some ups and downs, um, but I'm sure the fans have enjoyed it. Although they haven't been able to to be in the stands, which is disappointing for them, you know. Because the, the the goal when I was at the club, I remember speaking to Steve Hayes was was he wanted to take the club uh, to the championship. So the year they managed to do that, and there can't be any punters in the stands, so that's got to be disappointing for them. But still, great for, great for them to see it. No, it's a real shame for the supporters to miss out. I mean, something which really stood out was when they had uh, Tottenham in the FA Cup and you saw that on the TV and you thought, oh, this would be incredible if the, if the, if the ground was full as well. Oh, yeah. Like, like I said, we, you can go back to, to the atmospheres we had at, um, at Fulham and, and Charlton and, and, and obviously at the bridge and, and uh, they were fan- the fans turned up in their numbers and, and they backed the boys. So they could have had some great times, times this year, but hopefully they get to do it, do it again and get promoted back to the to, the championship if they if they do go down and um, next time obviously there'll be, be fans in the stands It must be really special as well to be part of the Ex-Players Association too because it's it's so nice as, as we found on the, the show just to be able to chat to, to different players from different generations and share you know the experiences that they've had and tell them about what you've done as well Yeah yeah no it's, it's great um, I, I think the last time I went to an event it would have been back in I think it must have been 2018 where there was some kind of legends dinner which was nice to go back and see some some old faces, um, so no, it was great. I mean, do you feel like, obviously for other clubs that you play for as well? But do you feel obviously you always look out for the results of the, the teams and, and feel a real kind of connection to them, especially you know playing so many times for Wickham as you did? Yeah, no, of course, of course I do. Yeah, Wickham was probably the, the place where I sort of made my name. So you know, it's great, and I always keep an eye on their results. And it, it's obviously great to see them do do well last year. Although they got promoted sort of by default, they still managed to to get in the division, and, and um, so no, it's been good. And, it's a tough division of the Championship. I played a lot of games in the Championship, so I understand uh, how tough it is. And uh, I, I just wonder, maybe if the fans were there, it could have been a bit different to them because they do turn up in their numbers at uh, at the stadium there. And what, do you have particular kind of favourite games or something, anything that particularly sticks out about your time at the club? Obviously, that Berry one sticks out because it was it was my first senior hat trick. The, the Chelsea at home game where we drew one all, and I, and I managed to score. Um, Charlton away where we won 1-0 was, would, would be one that, that sort of stuck in my mind and, and Fulham away where I think we won 2-1 and I, and I was fortunate enough to score again so no, there, there's, there's so many memories I can't really uh, mention all of them but, but they're just a few of, of the games that we had which, which were really enjoyable and I guess you've only sort of comparatively recently only you know, stopped playing and you must have such great uh, reflections on, on your career and as you say playing for your country as well yeah, yeah, it's that was bit. It's an I, 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 I was fortunate to have a good career. I probably could have done done more in terms of what, what I went on to do, but you, you can't sort of dwell on these things. And, and I had my time. And I look back on it fondly, and um, no, I'm, I'm proud of, of the achievements I I made. I'm really interesting your work now as well. It must be great to be able to you know pass on your experience to other players as well. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Um, I did all my, my coaching badges, my A licence and my B licence, and I did think about going down that road. But I enjoy my job. I work with some, some really good young players and some, some really good senior players. And, and the company I work for is one of the biggest in, in, in Europe, arguably. So it's great to sort of be involved. And I'm still involved in football, albeit not sort of in the nitty gritty day to day. But I still get, I'm still involved. It's still my bread and butter. And it's good to, to pass on my experiences. And I, and I made plenty of wrong decisions throughout my career but I suppose the best way to learn is, is by making wrong decisions you become wiser so I can now pass on my knowledge and, and 
hopefully the younger boys that I represent won't, won't make some of the same mistakes that I did growing up. And hopefully you and your family have been well during the during the pandemic. And I guess it's been fortunate in a way that sort of football has continued, so it's been able to you know able to carry on with your work. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 it's, it's different. Work life is different. I, most of the work now is is, is on Zoom, and I, <laughs> I'm a people person. I want to be around people and, and meeting people. So I'll be I'll be thankful when we can get out there and start meeting people, and life gets back to normal. But yeah, thankfully, it hasn't affected me too badly, and, and my family and we're all we're all uh, we're all safe and well. Oh, it's been brilliant to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time. No worries, mate. Take care. Great to speak to you, Jermaine Easter. I remember vividly going to Stamford Bridge. Um, I was quite a long way away in Stamford. I think I was about the, near the back. I was about as far away as in, you could still be, but it's still within the ground. But it was brilliant to, to be there on that night and, and see, you know, Sergio Torres come on and, and just really pleased for the team to be playing against people like Michael Balak and Shevchenko and, and people like that and, and to have got so sort of far, really. Yeah, I mean, it, it, again, it was so unexpected, uh, that run, in the same way that the, the FA Cup semi-final run was. And, you know, it was, it was such wonderful times. Um, and, yeah, uh, the, exactly like you say, just the fact that actually we were playing against players of those ilk was just amazing. Yeah, no, definitely. And really nice to hear from Jermaine. He's, he's an agent now. Not That makes him sound like a secret agent, the way I've said it. But... <laughs> <laughs> he's spying for other clubs. No, he's uh, <laughs> he's representing other players, which is really nice, isn't it? To, to once you've been a player and to be able to, as I say, sort of share your experiences with other up and coming players. And he works with other senior pros as well. But it must be so nice to to hear from some and um, to sort of, you know, if you're at a club and you, you can say to your agent, "Oh, what did you do in this situation?" Or, or you yeah, know. well, that's exactly what I was thinking. Was it must be really good to have an agent who has actually been a player because they will be able to relate to pretty much everything that you say. Whereas, actually, if you have an agent, and you know, and there must be lots out there who actually haven't played, it sometimes possibly is a bit more awkward. A really strange thing that Matt Bloomfield was in his team and he's, <laughs> he's still there now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, and again, that is amazing, isn't it? That you know, Matt Bloomfield. It's just like goodness me. You know, will he still be there in a hundred years? And you get the impression, possibly yes. <laughs> it could well be. Yeah, something to look forward to, isn't it? Well, it, we'll notice that actually. You know, should we have a look at our letter, that, or shall I save it that, for the third part? That player, he never ages. Shall I read you our letter? What is it? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Go on. <clears throat> Put this your best points of view. Absolutely. Uh, this letter was. Well, I don't know. To be honest, when it arrived, but it was discovered on the mat this morning <laughs> <laughs> at the studio. You have to understand that we're not all broadcasting at the studio, so it means no, that exactly. people don't necessarily check the post every day at the minute. Dear Bob and Colin, it starts. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's I nice thought... they put me first. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to... <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's alphabetical, no, yeah, obviously. I, I'm sure it was just alphabetical. Yeah, exactly. Got to file it in somewhere. Yeah. I would like to thank you both for a good Wanderers programme you do on a Thursday evening good so far. Oh, that's nice. I, I, I'm liking this already. I've been a Wanderer supporter for a very long time and it's nice to hear the ex-players especially the ones from long ago. Oh excellent yes indeed I think that's absolutely right. Sounds a bit like the start of Star Wars now doesn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, we, we've now all got the image of the text going into the, exactly. into the background. Uh, this suggests how long ago it was written. Last week was the best ever. You had my hero on Peter Sudderby. Oh, excellent. So that was a uh, fortnight ago, I think, wasn't it? Two weeks ago when we spoke to him. Yes, it was. Yeah. It was, it was nice to hear him talk about his career and the things he's done after. So thank you very much and keep going and doing a good job. Hope you can carry on next season. Yours sincerely, Jane Quinn of Micklefield. Oh, thank you, Jane. That's really nice. Thank and you yes, very much indeed. We have already confirmed that we will be carrying on next season. We've agreed personal terms. Indeed. If the, if the programme director allows us. <laughs> Yeah, so some of the demands have been just discarded, which is a shame, but... Yeah, we need Jermaine Easter being our agent, really. <laughs> yes, definitely. I should have put that to him, shouldn't I? But thank yeah. you so much. It's really nice to get um, sort of feedback on how, how the show is being received. And really nice that actually it, it's a letter. You know, yes. That, that's so, so Handwritten nice. written letter. That is very kind. Thank you, Jane. We are, we are very touched. Still to come, we'll hear from uh, Dave Ward, who's the Wicked Wanderers Women, as they're now to be known, uh, manager. Love uh, music. Love talk. Love Wickham Sound. And Colin. If you do fancy a laugh on a Tuesday evening, I'll look forward to speaking to you then. Although due to the modern ways of listening, you can catch up anytime via the Listen Again feature on the website, wickhamsound.org.uk. This is Wickham Sound. I see, I see that bit as being Star Wars as well, when Colin says that bit here. <laughs> um, anyway, as I was saying before you interrupted me, um, just to play your, your trail, I like the fact that you play your trail and not like the mid-morning trail or anything. Uh, also, are we being sponsored by Bridgerton at the minute? Because we keep mentioning it in trails. It does get a lot of mentions, doesn't it? It does get a lot of mentions. 
I've never. I don't even know what it is. To be honest, I was going to say, only until recently, I did. Bridges. <laughs> it could well I've, be. I've, is no, it like Trumpton? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I would watch it if it was. Get us with those Star it, Wars and Trumpton references. Is, is it? Is it like you know a bit like they did with Star Wars, where obviously then they sort of brought it back, and now they're doing like more trilogies. Yes, yeah, so spin-off. There was a new Trumpton trilogy <laughs> filmed in Star Little Marlow. Yes, I've brought it up to date now. Sorry, I, it's the Wick and Wonder show. I know uh, we're now talking about any old rubbish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the bar's that's, been lowered. In, indeed, that's how it gets when you've only got five games to go, and it's, it's looking yes. good. Crikey. Uh, still nil-nil, by the way, between Rotherham and Coventry. Uh, with regards to Wickham Wanderers ladies, that's what I was saying. Has that change already happened now? So should we now be referring to them as Wickham Wanderers women, which again is a bit hard to say, um, or is there a particular date where they change the signs? Well, as you'll hear with our chat from uh, Dave Ward in a few moments' time, I think it's officially still to be ratified, but Ooh, okay. uh, Luke pointed out that on their social media it's now changed. Oh, right, OK. So I think we should, we should probably go with Wickham Wanderers women. <laughs> yes, we should say it in that exact way. We yes. can wander with women. Say it very no, I'm separately. Just saying it carefully. Yes. And also, I'm, I'm slightly um, surreptitiously eating prawn crackers during the program. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, announcing carefully. Yes, excellent. Keep practicing. We can wander with women. So let's now hear from uh, their manager, Dave Ward, who um, you might have heard on previous editions of this program when we spoke to Alicia as well. Uh, the FA had announced or certainly proposed that the season is going to be curtailed. Uh, but uh, as Dave mentions, the, the league have um, sort of decided amongst themselves to come up with a sort of a Champions League type tournament. Not the championship. This is a bit like the Champions League. And um, uh, a number of teams are taking part, but Wickham Wanderers women uh, are not one of them but um dave will explain why and uh, a bit about the last sort of 12 months really and how you know w- they had a great run in the women's fa cup and then started the season late only played three games and um well I'll, I'll let dave pick up the story it's been another season of frustration i guess but understandably so given the the covid situation and the fact that we've seen cases rising so quickly i think it uh, was probably the right thing to do you know, there are many people in football now that are obviously desperate to get back. And I can understand that from a, a psychological perspective. You know, there are a lot of people that have missed that social contact and the, the fact that they cannot do what they enjoy doing most, which is kicking the ball about. So, yeah, yeah it, it has been frustrating. But equally, I think what we're looking forward to now with hopefully a good vaccine programme and other measures in place to uh, uh, try and reduce the spread of COVID so that we can have an uninterrupted season next season. And I think that's what most of us are really looking forward to more than anything, regaining and getting the grip of something close to pre-COVID normality. So all of our focus at the moment is on planning and preparing for uh, season 21-22. And how have the players coped, if you like, with, with you know, not having the training, not having the playing and not having the, as you say, kind of coming together really? Yeah, we've maintained a fair degree of that through Zoom sessions, which we do every two to three weeks. We've done all sorts from sort of online training courses, you know, physical training uh, with a bit of fun. We've done quiz events. Um, we just had social chats. And it was just with the, the aim of keeping the group together and keeping spirits um, high whilst uh, going through lockdown. And again, the vast majority of players, if not all, have uh, all done something to ensure that they're ticking over fitness-wise. Being sports people, they're not very good at sitting around doing absolutely nothing. So they have filled their days with different sorts of challenges. And there are quite a few of the, the players who are teachers as well. So they've been working right through the lockdown, apart from when the kids were away from school for an enforced period of time. So for those that don't know, what's the sort of state of the season, if you like? Um, Well, the the status is now that for um, all um, football in in the women's uh, pyramid from tiers three to six uh, has been declared null and void. Um, And the Southern Regional Women's Football League, of which we are um, a team in the Premier Division of that league, um, have organised a a small cup competition based on the Champions League format. Um, and 12 of the 17 member clubs have um, entered that this season. We decided not to, principally because we've got some long-standing injuries, uh, which was having a, a bearing on the size and number of available players in the squad. And we had the sad news that two of the squad have, have had to take the decision to retire from playing due to ongoing injuries that would um, significantly impact them in the future, as well as now. So. 
we're sad to say goodbye to Kaz Bisson and uh, Christina O'Connor. However, Kaz uh, has, has agreed to stay on as our fitness coach. Uh, she's uh, a full-time PT, sports massage therapist and so on. So um, to add her backroom strength to us is really good and it keeps her involved with the group of which she became an integral part when she signed at the beginning of the season. It must be quite a blow as well to lose those players, especially with the, the team development and, and the other players that you brought in as well. Yeah, well, Kaz, Kaz was one of the first ones I brought in. She's a a striker with a, a very good um, history and goal scoring record. Uh, she was with me at Bracknell Town, then she was with me at AFC Wimbledon, um, where she really flourished and developed as a player. And you know, to to be able to get hold of her again and uh, persuade her to not play National League football to help us get there was quite an achievement. But it was it, very disappointing to hear that the back injury that she's got is so potentially debilitating in the future and she carries on playing that um, she's had to make that unfortunate decision. But it's really good to have her uh, still around the club as part of the club and supporting the rest of the group. Obviously, it's a shame to only have had three league games, but you, you did say well in the Cup. What's your overall assessment, if you like, on, on how the team is progressing? We were making really good progress and everything was looking rosy, really, on, on, on the pitch until we got to the Abingdon uh, United game, which was the last league game that we played. We ended up with uh, five players on the sidelines at that point with through injury. And then during that game, we lost our skipper, Charlotte Bagshaw, with um, a torn cartilage. And we had to stick in a couple of the under-18s uh, because that's all that we had available. And to be fair, the two girls, Maddie Woods and Kiana Fryer, both came in and did uh, very well in that game for us. Unfortunately, we lost to a, a strong side, been a bit of a bogey side of ours over the last couple of years. And they beat us 2 0, scoring both their goals in the last five minutes of the game. You know, it, it was a knock for us. But having said that, looking at the recovery times for two of those players, Charlotte Bagshaw and Jordan Hursley Atkins, who had broken an ankle in the previous game against Newbury. They're only just going through weight-bearing exercises now and regaining mobility and starting to build their fitness ready for pre-season. So those two players would have been unavailable uh, to us as well. So the squad was severely diminished with the loss of four outfield players um, out of a group of 18. And in that group of 18, we've got three goalkeepers. (laughs) So things would have been really difficult had we tried to play any competitive football at this period. It it felt the right thing to do to sit back, reflect and plan for 21-22. It's nice to see the under-18s they return to action, isn't it? And have a bit of a spotlight on them. And also good for you as well for for uh, players coming forward. Um, The the under-18s have come back and done remarkably well. I was present for the first uh, of their training sessions uh, and it was really important that you know, they, they looked after themselves physically and psychologically and looked after each other. And that, that was the big message and the big concern for the management and coaching staff um, around the club. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that they came back and uh, were well prepared. But uh, having said that, they have uh, risen to the challenge remarkably well, winning their first game 7-0. Um, and then they won again at the weekend uh, 5-1. And it's looking good for them at the moment. I'm, I'm really pleased to see that progress. They've come back hungry. They've been careful during the training sessions not to overextend themselves and risk injury. And so far, that um, approach has worked pretty effectively for us. So really delighted to see that and to see the girls enjoying their football again. And going back to your side, obviously, is there something quite nice in a way that you've now got this enforced extended period to to prepare the team and, and the players in, 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 to, to come back? Because as you say, they've had quite a long time off and it, it must be quite strange to kind of suddenly start playing again. It is strange, yeah, um, and it's 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 strange seeing a lot of clubs back playing football in some way, shape, or form, whilst we're actually going through a planning phase. Again, I'm quite grateful for the for the time because I've also just lost uh, Jack Wells, who was my assistant manager and the uh, coach. Uh, Jack's taken an opportunity um, to go to Wantage Town in the Evo Stick Big One um, as first team coach. Uh, which is a fantastic move for him in, in terms of his coaching career and de- ongoing development. We're, we're really sad to lose him. I'm sad to lose him because I brought him in not long after I came to the club. and um, He'd been a tremendous asset for myself and uh, in particular for the squad. Done an awful lot of work with them in helping to move them forward as a group, 
and to help establish a couple of systems of play that we use very effectively. So, yeah, we're, we're disappointed to see Jack go, but uh, wish him all the very best in, in his future because um, he is an excellent coach uh, and he's a, he's a good guy as well. So uh, I wish him every success uh, with Wanted when he gets uh, going again in 21-22. Uh, but that, that also means I'm on the hunt now for um, other coaching staff uh, to come in and support me. I was going to say, it sounds like you've got a rebuilding program with with additional players and you know members of your backroom team as well. Yes, yeah, very much so. Not what I'd anticipated, I, I must admit, but uh, that's football, I think. It happens at every level of the game. Uh, things change. Sometimes you have to go through a rebuilding um, stage and, and we're having to go through that to some extent. Thankfully, the, the the vast majority of the squad are, uh, are going to stay around. The only doubt on that is Lindsay Pinker, who we transferred over to Abingdon United, ironically, so that she could finish off the season because she was so desperate to play, although she just moved into a new house in Abingdon. So I suspect that the move to Abingdon would become a, a longer-term move rather than her coming back to Wickham. Um, so that's another influential player that uh, I've potentially lost for the for next season. So um, as you can see, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm already up against it to some extent in terms <laughs> of finding the right sort of players and then attracting them to the club. No, definitely. It'd be really interesting to see kind of what develops there. So what's the kind of timetable, if you like, as to what's happening in terms of you know players coming back for training or, or do they have some time off now in, in terms of uh, a bit of a break? Well, they, they seem to have quite a lot of a break as it was, but but in terms of the preparation for the next season? Yeah, I mean, most of the preparation is off the pitch at the moment in terms of uh, securing players and securing additional coaching staff. But I'm anticipating that season 21-22 will probably start uh, from us late August. So our typical pre-season would be that we would start the first week of July. Uh, we'd be back and we'd be training two or three times a week. We're probably going to bring that forward a couple of weeks just so that we can ease the players back in over an extended period and also give opportunities for other players to come along and take a look at us and for me to have a look at them uh, and see if they're the right fit for us moving forward. So it, it gives us a little bit of extra time to plan and prepare, I think, properly for the new season. No, it sounds really interesting. And just finally, I, it really gets the impression, I, I was going to ask if it, if it feels the same for you, but every time we speak to you, there seems to be a real kind of growth in the club and the development and the progress of the side, but also in, in interest and profile as well. Yeah, uh, we, we've, we've restructured the way that um, we manage the club behind the scenes to the extent that the uh, Wickham Trust or the Sporters Trust uh, are now very heavily involved in the, the committee management, uh, if you like, board management of the uh, female section of the club. So that's given us an awful lot more resilience. There's been a, a change to our social media platform. We've also been, changed our, our name, or we're about to change their name formally. Uh, we've just got registered that the FA and the county FA and the league. Uh, but we'll be changing from Wickham Wanderers Ladies to Wickham Wanderers Women. It seems to be the, the way that women's football is progressing. You know, a, a lot of clubs have changed from ladies to women and, you know, it, it, it seemed to be something that the board were quite keen for us to do. So um, we're just finalising uh, discussions around that at the moment, but I think we'll see a name change to Wickham Wanderers um, FC Women. But the the committee in, in, in the background are really, really strong, really supportive and are very keen to drive the club forward and to raise the profile of female football and opportunity. Another aspect of that is to use this planning time to bring in or to recreate um, a reserves, reserve team so that we've got an, another step for the older under 18s who aren't disappearing off all over the country to university to stay within the club, um, as well as have some more experienced players in there um, that are capable of making the step or helping those younger players make the step into the first team. So th th there's a lot of work going on in terms of trying to re-establish the reserve team that we lost at the beginning of last season. Oh, it's been great to speak to you. Really appreciate it. And, and I wish you all the best with your, your rebuilding and, and have a good uh, few months. Yes, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's full of challenges, but it, it, they're, they're interesting ones and uh, they're ones that are enjoyable. And it will be nice to see how we do when we get to twenty one, twenty two, and whether or not preparations have uh, been as effective as I'd like them to be. Oh, exciting times. Thank you so much for your time. Great to chat to you.
OK, brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Colin. I'll speak to you soon. Great to chat to uh, Dave Ward, the manager of Wickham Wanderers Women. I uh, must say, get well soon to Charlotte as well, who... Uh, Indeed. That's, <laughs> that sounds painful, doesn't it? Yes, it really, really does. Um, so is their website going to be www.www? <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. Rehearse humour can be funny. Yes. It could well Thank be. You. <laughs> I, I, that's, you know. <laughs> That's the, I, I will take that. That's, that's the highlight of the show so far. And even, uh, as mentioned, it's a really nice opportunity. Uh, now that the seniors, I don't know if you call them that, uh, are not playing, it's really nice to, to shine a light on the under-18s who are back in action. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's really good that actually, you know, even though this season has been cancelled, that there is still some football being played. Um, so, uh, yes, all the very best to the under-18s. And they're playing Maidenhead Ravens next. Um, and uh, similarly, um, good luck to Flackwell Heath this weekend, um, because again, although the non-league league season has been cancelled, if you see what I mean, the cup competitions continue. Um, and so Flackwell are travelling to Lansing to play a fourth round tie that was originally meant to be played in January. Oh, um, so in the fourth round of the FA Vars, if they win it, they will just be three games away from Wembley Stadium. That is exciting. Yeah, I is. must confess, I'm not sure where Lansing is. No, I, I think it's in West Sussex, but I'm not sure. Oh, it sounds like it should be, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent news. Uh, to be mad, it was at Adam Spark this week. Uh, yeah, again, that, that was slightly strange. So, <laughs> so what, what did he do? He'd, he'd been cycling around all the local football clubs. Yeah, so the Thames Valley, his, wasn't it? So he's Bringing got, his mallets with him. Yes, I think it was also for charity. He'd been to Oxford and um, Maidenhead, obviously, is his team, and uh, called in Adam's Park as well. And uh, yes, so so he, he he took a mallet with him, but it was a much smaller mallet than I remember. Yes, yeah, so I think there are, he's got other mallets. And there's, there must be. Uh, it, yes, uh, and also this mallet has now got a face, and I never remember the mallet on mallet's mallet. And if you're of a certain age, you you'll have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> I was just saying, if we just tuned in now, you just think this has gone very surreal. Indeed. Yes, absolutely. We've had Dad's Army references and <laughs> mallet's mallet references. Star Wars, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it was it was uh, it was good to see Timmy there uh, in a Wickham shirt, even though we know he's a Maidenhead fan. With <laughs> Absolutely, no, it's, it's been been good fun this week. It's been really great to hear from uh, Gareth. Obviously, uh, still, um, the, I think you get the impression, don't you? And, and I suppose you could argue that he would say this, but they're they're definitely up for the up for the challenge. Which oh, is definitely. Coming. Yes, certainly, uh, and I, I would imagine that the same, you know, the same thing will be true, even even if the the inevitable eventually happens. I'm sure he will still be wanting us to get as many points as we possibly can and put in fantastic performances and whatever. Um, one good bit of news over the last few days um, is that his odds have slightly lengthened for the uh, Preston manager job. Um, he is uh, the favourite um, once again um, after that article that I think was in the Sun on Sunday, very heavily linking him with the job. And of course, Preston haven't actually upon a manager yet and the thought is that they are now waiting until the end of the season um, anyway at some point this week uh, I think he was uh, as short as 7-4 to four. Um, he's lengthened slightly out to 2-1 to one. he is still the favourite though for the Preston job at the moment and really interesting that Jermaine said from his championship experience it, it's so close isn't it literally anything can happen so difficult to predict yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, fingers crossed still. Um, it, uh, incidentally, it is still uh, Rotherham nil, Coventry nil as well uh, in that one. Uh, I don't suppose one tour really either, though, do we? Uh, I was going to say, it's one of those games, it's very hard to work out exactly what we want to happen. Um, you know, if if the game could be abandoned and both of them could be fine. <laughs> Snow, like, that's what we want. Exactly. <laughs> you know, some terrible, violent sort of like clash between the players. That that would be ideal. Or they could go into administration. Violent clashes <laughs> no, no. I'll see you next week.